You want to do accounting right? You gotta have a Celsius. Let's go. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel where we discuss professional development, CPA life, sound, everything in between. If that sounds awesome to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and welcome to the channel. If you have been following the channel for any time period, you know that I preach Excel in almost every single video. What the fuck? Is that a fly? <laughs> Whether you're an auditor in public accounting or an accounting student trying to ace your intermediate accounting class, Excel is critical to your overall professional development. Lucky for you guys, you don't have to go through the pain and agony that I went through when I started my career in public accounting with not that much Excel experience. I am officially starting a series on this channel called Excel for Accountants and Future CPAs. This series will cover the basic Excel skills that you will need on an everyday basis, whether you're in college or starting your career in public accounting. As a CPA with over seven years of public accounting experience, I can tell you that I've experienced a lot in my career. And I hope these short Excel tutorials help you when you're facing an issue at work or at school. So now let's get into it. All right, what's up guys? So now we got an AR aging opened up here and this is gonna be, I'm gonna try to go over issues that you're gonna face every time you receive something from your client. Believe me when I tell you, they're probably gonna be ugly and look like this. Uh, you know, they don't take too much time to format it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna teach you guys how to use certain tricks and Excel functions in order to make sure that your work gets done on time and you're able to, you know, properly maneuver and analyze the data that's given to you. So the whole, I have a finished product here, which is this AR aging. Uh, this is essentially how we're gonna want it to look uh, from getting it like this, okay? So and we're also gonna answer four critical questions uh, that are here that's gonna be used, you know, a lot, a lot of the times when you're doing your testing uh, in public accounting, you're gonna get an Excel file that looks like this and you're gonna have to make it look pretty nice, presentable and also able to put it in a way where you're able to analyze the data. So the first thing we're going to go over is the zoom change. Okay. So as you guys can see, it's the, the zoom is about 150 zoom. We're going to update that. And I'm going to teach you guys through this course and through these um, lessons, I guess, in Excel, what we're going to do is I'm also going to teach you guys how to use hotkeys. Hotkeys are essentially shortcuts that you can use without using your mouse and just the Excel functions. That's one thing that I think is really cool when you uh, start getting quick with Excel is, are the hotkeys. Uh, not only does it make you, does it look cool, but in, in reality, it really makes you a lot quicker when it comes to analyzing data. And the faster you are at analyzing the data, uh, the quicker you're gonna be and able to complete your work and get through certain things and you know impress everyone. So the first thing we're gonna do is zoom change. And the way we're gonna do that is you're, the zoom change is gonna be Alt W, Q, tab, and we're gonna make it, I always try to do everything at 100, okay? And again, let's let's backtrack. The way we're gonna do the zoom change, okay? Alt gives you control of the entire keys up here, okay? So Alt, W, if you see view is right there, we're gonna hit view, okay? Q is zoom, tab, it automatically goes here, tab, and we're gonna do 100. Again, let's do that again. Control Z, and Control Z is how you go back. So Control Z, again, Control Z, and we're gonna go forward one, Control Z, goes back to the way it was, okay? So we're gonna do zoom change. Every time you open up your, your work papers, your, your Excel work papers, Always try to make the font consistent in all your work. I always say 100 uh, is probably, you can do 90 or 100 just to make sure that when you, when you, when someone goes to review your work or when you go open a file, you want it to be as legible and as easy to read as possible. You want to just, as soon as someone opens up the file, you want them to completely understand what you're trying to do. So the zoom change, again, Alt, View, W, Q, Tab, 100, beautiful. See, now we can see the whole thing. Boom, and we're there. So now we can see a little more. Remember, when we just got it from the client, it was at 150 zoom. We don't wanna be doing that, okay? For someone reviewing your work, or for even when you're analyzing the data, you wanna be able to just look at this, okay? Right when you open it up. So now that we're done with the zoom, Let's do auto column width. And what I mean by that is, do you see how some in some of your columns here, the numbers are kind of screwed up? This is a very simple analysis that we're doing right here. Sometimes you're gonna get 
literally spreadsheets from your client or whoever that they're going to be caught. There's going to be so many columns. So what auto column width does is that it adjusts all of them to where you can see all of the data in every single column. Okay. So the way we're going to do that, we're going to highlight or hover over the entire table. Okay. So you're telling Excel, Hey, highlight this, you're selecting the entire table. And the way we're going to do that, you're going to do alt H home. Okay. O I, you see that? And then all the data in here is, you can see it now. Okay. As you get better with Excel, this is going to, this is going to be a lot easier for you guys to do. So let's go control Z and let's do that again. Alt, alt is going to be your best friend eventually home. Okay. Now you can see, all right, what do I want to do? What key do I want to hit? O right here format. Okay. So O format I auto fit column width. Boom. So it auto fits all of your data. So you can see exactly what's going on before. Remember how before it was, you can see certain data, certain names were blocked off. It looks really messy, right? It's, it looks ugly and horrible. So again, alt H O I boom. And we're there. So now you guys know exactly how to do the auto fit column with again, when you get Excel files from your client and you're working, trust me, they're going to be messy. So you want to be able to see and analyze all of the data. So now that we got the zoom, we, we fit all the columns so we can see all the data that's presented to us. Now we're going to number format. As you guys can see here, some of their, their zeros, there's, it's just really hard to understand and see what the heck is anything, right? When you don't number format numbers inside of an Excel, they're just really hard to understand or see, or is this 2 million? Is it 200,000? Is it 2000? I don't know. It's just really hard to see, right? So the way we're going to do that again, you're going to cover, hover over all your Excel. Okay. But again, when you have massive data sets, you're not going to want to hover over all of it and, and manually do it. It's going to, it's just going to be a mess. Okay. And the way to do this without a mouse is very simple too. Hold shift, right arrow, and then continue to hold shift. And you can just literally go all the way down manually. Okay. To expedite this process, you hold shift and that'll lock essentially the cell. Okay. Control. Okay. And you'll tell Excel, Hey, I want you to go all the way down until the data set is no longer there. Boom. Highlight the whole thing. Okay. It'll only go until that table, the data set is done. When things are simple like this, they're really easy for you to build up those calluses when it comes to doing your Excel tricks. So when you have massive amounts of data, you can manipulate it in a way that's really easy for you to understand and help you make actual business decisions. Okay. Again, shift, shift control. We'll go to the end of the data set, shift control down. And we want to go all the way down here. Again, if this had, if it had, if it had let's just say 500 columns. You hit shift control and it had data all the way through. You would literally end up at the last data set. You hit control down again. You'd highlight essentially the whole table. And what we're going to do, we're going to give it a number format. Okay. And this is the way we do this. You're going to hit alt H K K is comma style. Okay. K boom. You see how it gave you all of the numbers. Now they all look really nice. Look how it looked before. You see that it's terrible, right? We want to give them a number format. So alt H K beautiful. Okay. One thing that I typically like to do, I typically don't like seeing the decimal points just cause again, we want to make this as easy as possible for us to see, analyze and be able to manipulate the data in a way where we can make sound business decisions. Okay. Personally, me, I like seeing whole numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Alt again, Alt is going to be your best friend. I'm going to literally repeat Alt throughout this whole video. You're going to hit Alt home. Okay. H is home. And what we're going to do nine, do you see if we hit nine, nine is right here. It gets rid of one decimal. Alt H nine. Boom. We got rid of all the decimals right now. The numbers are beautiful. Now they look clean. So now we got them all in number comma format. Okay. And that's the comma style here. Look at that. We, we're, we're getting there, man. I'm so excited. This is awesome. Now that we have a number format, you see here provision percentage as per group policy. So it looks like this is a percentage. So now we're going to teach you guys how to do things, how to do percentage format now with the hotkeys also. So the way we're going to do that is alt 
home H P you see right here P is percentage style so we want these in percentage boom there we go and look at that beautiful and let's just say uh, we wanted to see these uh, we wanted to see not whole but we also wanted to see decimals behind it to see if it's you know 3.25 or or 2.9 or if it's rounding alt h0 alt h0 and look at that we have we now see what exactly it is it, essentially that let's say that 2.50 in row d31 alt h9 alt h9 that rounds up to 3%, but it's actually 2.5%. Okay, when you're dealing with millions of dollars, that could be a big difference. So let's just, for this one, I do want to see the actual decimal. So we're going to do Alt H0, Alt H0. Okay, cool. Now that we have a pretty nice spreadsheet, it's not, not bad. One thing that you guys will always come across is the fact that the data, right? This is customers. This is our total out, uh, accounts receivable balance. This is amount uh, not due yet, 1 to 130, 31 to 60, 61 to 90, okay? So this is total outstanding balance due, okay? And if we scroll down, let's say, for example, this AR aging had 500 customers and you literally have to scroll down all the way to see all 500. It would be a problem, right? Because then we wouldn't see, okay, well, what column is the 0 to 31 uh, days old, 31 to 60, 60? Like, which one is it? We, we would get lost, right? So the way to do that is we're going to do freeze panes, okay? You got to make sure that you, free, you tell Excel where to freeze it. So you place your cursor at wherever you want to freeze, essentially where you want Excel to freeze uh, the file. So what we do, let's say we want we want to freeze it right here, right? Because we want to be able to see what customers, the total, not due yet, 1 in 30, 31 in 60, 61 in 90. So the way we're going to do this is you're going to hit Alt, View is W, Freeze Panes, F, Freeze Panes again, boom. And now as you can see, because we had our cursor here, Let's say we put our cursor, I don't know, let's say we screw up and we put it on this 6,000, 6, 6,801, okay? Alt WFF. Now we freeze it there. We don't wanna freeze it there. We wanna freeze it right at the top where we're able to see exactly what number equates to what type of balance, okay? So we're gonna freeze it again. So Alt W, so you're gonna to go to View, Freeze Panes, F, F. Boom, and now it's frozen. Look at that, beautiful. And that's it, so that's how we do it. So one thing that you always have to do, especially if you're in the audit practice, you wanna make sure that the formulas that your client or whoever is using, you wanna make sure they're correct, okay? And the way to do that is you're gonna hit, the way to check formulas in Excel, you're gonna do control and <laughs> this little key, this little key is actually funny, it's called the grave accent. I, I took notes here. The grave is I just know what it is, but uh, essentially, yeah. So you're gonna hit Control, and it's the literally the what the the one key on the left hand side of your keyboard below your escape function. Okay, so it's called the grave ascent. I'll put a uh, I'll put a little symbol on it here to make sure you guys know what I'm talking about. So, but the way to do that, Control Ascent. So now, look how neat that is. Control ascent, control grave ascent is essentially control and the, the key on the top, utmost top left hand corner of your keyboard. Okay, so control ascent and look what this does, it's awesome. I would recommend you do this on every single one of your work papers or anything you work on. Now you can see, okay, how are you calculating the total balance? Is there any plug in here? You know, in my audit experience and in my audit days, I, I have seen some pretty uh, funky formulas to say the least. And this one has helped me the most uh, because you can see exactly how they're calculating. And you can see here, it's all uniform. So there's no funny business going on, you know? I always, always, in my audit days, I always made sure I did control, grave ascent, and you can see exactly how they are coming up with these amounts. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a filter to this data set, okay? So we wanna be able to see and make decisions and see, okay, we, we still have our three questions, our four questions answered here. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna add a filter to the data, okay? I always do this just to, you know, even if I am gonna use it or not, and the way to add a filter to the data, and you'll see why we need to do this, but to add a filter, hold Control, Shift, L, boom. 
You see that? And it literally does all of the filter for you. Control Shift L to take it off. And the way to manually do this is if you have a data set, Excel will recognize that you have, that this data set is all one thing. And the, I guess the long way to do it would be you go to data and you hit filter here, boom. And it'll add the same thing. And one thing that I always did is I make sure that I highlight the entire table. From the first thing that we went over on holding shift and control down, we want to make sure that we highlight the data set that we want to be filtered. Sometimes in my experience, I've had Excel kind of, or maybe it's my own mistake, but I've had Excel make certain kind of dumb mistakes or issues where it didn't really filter the data that I wanted to. to. So what we do, what I do is I highlight the, the exact table that I want to filter, okay? Hold control shift L and then that fil it puts filters on the data that you want to analyze. Again, to do the shortcut, control shift L. Boom, and that's how we add uh, filters to the data set. Now that we have all our, essentially all the, the Excel file is now very, very easy to read. We know exactly what they're doing. They're summing the totals. They're coming up with a provision here. We can now answer some of the questions because the first thing, typically when you guys get good at doing this, this is gonna take you literally two, three minutes to format a data set. Especially if it's not, if it's a little clean the way this one was and you just have to do a few things to manipulate the data, this is gonna be very easy to do. I know we took some time to go through it, but as you guys continue to implement these steps in every one of the work papers or emails or anything you're analyzing, you're gonna get very quick at doing this and it's gonna be very easy for you guys to do. So the way we're gonna do it now, we're gonna go ahead and answer the questions. Now that we have our data, we have filters on it, we know what numbers it is, we see the totals, we can see all the customers, let's go ahead and answer the question. So, who has the largest AR balance outstanding? Well, now that we have filters on, it's gonna be very easy. Again, we can probably do this manually and see who has the, the highest one, but what about if this was 500 rows? Oh man, being able to manipulate that would suck. So, now that we have it like this, we're gonna go ahead and use this filter. To use this filter, you can hit Alt down arrow and that'll give you the filter set, okay? Or you can just hit the, uh, the down arrow here. And what do we want? We want the largest AR balance. So we wanna sort this data set from largest to smallest because we wanna see who has the largest balance, uh, who has the largest AR balance outstanding. So we sort that, boom. Hey, what do you know? Uh, Ryan Corretto, CPA, that guy isn't paying his bills. Ryan Corretto owes them $3.3 million. Oh, that would not be a good day. So, now we answered the first question. And you're gonna come across things like this all the time. Um, you know, when you're in practice, someone's gonna wanna know, hey, who has the biggest AR balance outstanding? All right, beautiful. All right, so that's who has the largest balance outstanding? Ryan Corretto, CPA does. What are we gonna do next? What is the percentage of AR concentration in each customer? Okay, now we are going to do this, all right? So what we're, who has the, what is the percentage of AR concentration in each customer? So now that we, we know all the numbers, right? Now we need to add formulas to this. And the way to do this, anytime I add a formula to a data set, you can do equals, I do plus. <laughs> The plus sign will work. The, will tell Excel the same thing as the equal sign. And you can start with any formula. You can do sum, you can do a, a plethora of lookup. Yeah, B lookup. As soon as you hit plus, that's when you tell Excel, hey, I want you to start a formula for me. So we're gonna hit plus, and what do we want to see? We want to know what is the percentage of AR concentration in each customer. So we're gonna take this total balance for each customer and divide it by the total AR. We're gonna start here. We're gonna take this number, divide it by the total AR balance outstanding, and what's that? Okay, so, and again, from the previous thing we talked about earlier, how do you turn a percentage uh, uh, with a hotkey? Yes, we can go here and turn that into a percentage. We're not gonna do that. You're gonna do Alt H P. I wanna really get you guys in the habit of using your hotkeys. So, Alt H P, boom. And then to add, let's say we want to add some decimals, Alt H zero, boom, Alt H zero. So look at that, 28.98%, Brian Credo CPA. But we want to run this formula down, okay? And see, but look at, if I just run the formula down, let's say I copy the formula all the way down. So we're gonna copy the formula down. So the way we're gonna copy it, you're gonna hit Control C, and you're gonna hit Shift, Paste, 
Boom. But look at that. What? What do you mean? Why is Excel doing this? We're dividing the total customer balance by, wait a minute, by zero. But we want to divide each customer balance by this total. So the way we do that is simple. We're gonna do, again, this balance divided by, and we're gonna, we're gonna want every single customer to be divided by this number. <clears throat> we're gonna lock this, okay? The way to lock it, you're gonna hit F4. That's how we're gonna lock the key. So you see that here, this B, cell B30, you're telling Excel, hey, I want you to lock in that number. So now when we do control C, okay, is how you copy, control V, you're gonna again hit shift to lock in that cell. You're gonna scroll all the way down, control V, boom, look at that, look at that beauty. Now you can see every customer is being divided by the total customer balance because you told Excel, hey Excel, lock in the cell at B30. Now we see what is the percentage of AR in each customer and we're gonna add this in here. Again, auto fit with column, <laughs> the one we went over earlier, Alt H O I, boom, boom. See, I do, I literally do this all the time, guys. Like I, I want, oh man, this is awesome. I want you guys to get in the habit of doing this because once you learn these little skills that we're doing today, I promise you, you are gonna use these so often, okay? Uh, please see AR concentration at left. Beautiful, okay. All right, so now third, third question. What balance outstanding does the Mr. CPA podcast have? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to say, all right, we have a filter. Again, we always filter the data because we're probably gonna end up using it. So the way we do that, again, alt down arrow, that's how you access the filter. And if you hit alt down arrow E, it gets you straight to the search bar. The Mr. CPA podcast. Oh, huh, that guy must have an awesome podcast. <laughs> we wanna figure out his AR balance outstanding. So alt down arrow, E, Mr. CPA. Boom, enter. Look at that, and it filtered the data for us. What balance does the Mr. CPA podcast have outstanding? One, three, two, six. We're gonna write down a number. One, three, two, six, five, six, nine. All right, Alt H9, Alt H9. To get rid of the decimals, again, Alt H9, Alt H9, he gets rid of decimals. And Mr. CPA podcast has one, three, one point three million dollar balance. And in order to, re now that we have this filter, you might think, oh, what the heck? How do we remove this filter? This, this, I need to be able to see the whole data set. So the way we do that is we're gonna do Alt A C. It removes filters. Puts the data right where you want it again. Awesome, okay. So uh, we have, all right, so what is the balance outstanding in Mr. CPA podcast? 1.3 million. <clears throat> all right, we have one more question to answer. Does the accounts receivable listing agree to the trial balance? All right, well, Let's see if it does. Total AR balance is 11.4 million. And we're gonna put here accounts receivable per TB, okay? And the way to format it correctly, Alt and Home. And then if you guys can see here, you can literally align the data how you want. So AR will get it to the right, AC will center it, and AL will align it to the left. We want to align it to the right. We want the cell to be aligned to the right. So AR, boom, gets you there. Control B is the shortcut to bold the data. So does it tie to the TB? All right, we're gonna hit plus. So the trial balance is on tab two. What is the accounts receivable balance for the AR lead schedule? 11.4 million. Look at that, boom. And now the way we add a border to, to signify to someone, hey, I'm taking the difference of something. This is gonna be my sum total. Alt H, B is border. See that here? Top border, B, and top border. We want a top border on top of it because our cell is here. So Alt H, B is border here. B, P, top border because we want a top order on top of it, B, and you're gonna hit plus, okay? We want the difference. We wanna see if those are two are different. Obviously, from looking at them, they're not. You're gonna do this, minus this one, boom. And look at that. 
our AR aging ties to the penny to the TB. This is exactly what you want to see when you're auditing the account receivable. Okay, we, all, we need to tie one more number though. There's also a provision on here, which is essentially an allowance for doubtful accounts. And the allowance for doubtful accounts, they're saying it's 195. Again, we're not testing the accuracy of that here. We just want to make sure that it ties. So again, plus, because we want everything to be linked. Okay, everything needs to be linked. So we're gonna hit plus. We're telling Excel, we want to pull a number. We want to start, an, we want to start a formula. We want this to be equal to something. Okay, that's exactly what you're telling Excel. The way to maneuver through an Excel file quickly, if you hit control and page up and down, that'll give you complete access of every single tab. Plus, control, page down, okay? And you want this, you want it to pull this allowance for doubtful accounts number, right? Because you, you want to try to tie it to the trial balance. Again, we want to put this in number format, which we taught you guys earlier today. Alt H K, Alt H nine, Alt H nine. You want to put a and you want to put a border on top of this. So Alt H B for borders, and then P top border. So we're gonna take the difference between these two, and boom! Look at that, beautiful. We agree the A R aging to the T B without exception. Beautiful. And the last thing we're gonna do is I always remove grid lines from, from Excel files. I just don't like seeing the grid lines. And the way to do that, we're gonna hit Alt, View, which is W, and VG, grid lines, VG. Boom, that's it. So let's do that again. So Alt, View, and grid lines is right there, VG. See, it tells you exactly what you need to hit in order to make the action, VG, boom and we put the grid lines back. You guys see all the grid lines? We're gonna remove them, all WBG, and it removes the grid lines. All WBG, I can do this all day, guys. View, grid lines, right here. Cool, so we remove the grid lines. And now, we wanna just, I personally don't like the green, so we're the way to change colors, okay, on an Excel is very simple, and we're gonna do two, two simple formulas on this one, okay? First, we're gonna change the font. To change the font is very simple. Alt, home, FC. FC is right here. FC, and we're gonna make this black, okay? Again, Alt, home, H, FC is right here, okay? Beautiful, and that's how we change it, okay? Now we want to change the fill color. So the way to do that, same thing. Alt, H, home, H, as you can see here, H, and now we want to change the color. Let's make this gray. Gray is always like a very easy, subtle, boom, there we go. The one we want it to look like is a, a slightly different and we're gonna make three more changes to it that again, you're gonna use all the time. The, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a column, okay? And the way to do that, the, the way I always remember how to add columns is you're gonna hit control space bar, okay? Just remember this, uh, <laughs> columns are typically short and, and fat, right? Control space bar, columns are short and fat. The control, the control button is short and fat. So columns are short and fat. Control space bar, okay, gets you access to the, you highlight the whole column, okay? Columns, control space bar, short and fat. Control space bar, short and fat, okay? Control shift plus, that's how you're gonna add a column in here. Columns, short and fat. Control space bar, and you're gonna hit control shift plus, and that's gonna be, you're gonna be able to add a column quickly. And we're gonna add a row now. Rows are typically long and skinny, like the shift bar, okay? So the way that we do, the way we're gonna do this, you're gonna hit shift space bar, that's gonna give you control of the whole thing, shift space bar, and again, control shift plus. Boom, and look at that. Let's add another one in there. Con shift space bar, long rows are long and skinny. Shift space bar, control shift plus. Boom, and we are, look at that, looking good. And now we have a complete data set. Let's see our completed one. Wow, see that? 
And let's see how our artist looks now. Wow, look at that. And we have now a completed AR aging analysis. Awesome work, guys. If you were able to follow along, great work. Hopefully you were able to learn some basic Excel functions that you're gonna be using on a daily basis when you're analyzing data. And if you're still here for the video, I wanna say thank you very much, I appreciate it. This is the first time I make a video teaching Excel like this, so bear with me guys, the video quality, everything will get better as time goes on, and I appreciate it. And if you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit the like button below, and please let, leave me a comment below, letting me know any other Excel things that you have trouble working on or anything that you wanna to continue to learn, because to be honest with you, I had the utmost fun making this video, and I really hope you got some value from it. And one one other thing, I'm also gonna start teaching you guys how to actually audit for some of you guys that are maybe graduating soon or in your first year in public accounting. Anything you guys want me to teach you how to audit or anything like that that comes to mind, please also leave me a comment below. All right guys, that's gonna be it for the video today. If you found some value from the video, please make sure to hit the like button below guys. And also, don't forget to follow me on any social media platform you use. And until next time, work hard, dress well, peace.